Tough recommendations from the Bank of International Settlements in its annual report. The central banker's bank states rates across the world must go higher in order to rein in inflation. Our next guest heads the department that analyzes policy issues for the world's major central banks and financial regulators. Stephen Cicchetti is with us now. He is head of the Monetary and Economic Department. He's also the chief economist for the Bank of International Settlements. He's with us on the phone this morning from Basel. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us. The report that you published, this is an annual report, basically says central banks around the world need to raise rates. But I'm wondering, Stephen, how much risk does this have, in the opinion, given the fact that the U.S. is somewhat struggling, as is Europe? Well, I think that what we're not saying is that every country needs to raise interest rates. What we're pointing out is that inflation is rising across the world, and overall in the world as a whole, the amount of economic slack uh, has really has really really been reduced and almost entirely disappeared. And over the past year, we've seen inflation rise by about a full percentage point, the headline level uh, on average around the world. And as that's happened, monetary policy has not kept up. And so real interest rates have fallen and now average below minus 1%, again, if you look around the world. If you look around the world, as you do, Stephen, you do see these emerging market economies with very hot inflation figures, for lack of a better term, but China has seemed pretty aggressive in trying to rein in inflationary pressures. Well, I mean, they 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 have in in a number of uh, of ways, uh, but obviously not the entire world. I mean, I if I look at the world, there are only a handful or even less uh, than a handful of countries whose monetary policy is even close to what I would think of as being normal for them or neutral. So, um, so I, I think there's quite a ways to go. But as I said, it's not every country that needs to do this. Every country's experience and conditions are are some what are somewhat different. If you had to, to name a top three list, Stephen, of which central banks need to move now, which are they? Well, I mean, again, I, wouldn't, I, I would hesitate to talk about an individual country. That's sort of our general policy. Um, but, uh, but instead, just to point to the fact that, uh, that things, are, things are getting very hot and we're concerned that, that with commodity prices rising as they have been uh, and inflation overall starting to rise, there's a risk of second round effects more generally. Um, and, uh, and I would say a risk, that if we look back at the 1970s, we sort of know what happens if you don't get control of this so early. So the worst case scenario then is stagflation? Well, the worst case scenario is that we misjudge what the productive capacity of the economy is and inflation gets out of control, uh, which again, I would say that's more what happened in the 1970s. People felt that, uh, that, they, that the economy could run uh, at, at levels of output and growth that were higher than it turned out, than turned out to be true. Um, and as a consequence, inflation in, in much of the world went into d double digit uh, numbers and became very costly to reduce, very painful. And we don't want to see that again. Stephen, we thank you. Not wanting to go back to the 70s, Stephen Cicchetti joining us there, chief economist for the Bank of International Settlements.